There are 7.2 million children under the age of six in South Africa. Their fate is already sealed. Will they be highly skilled and employable one day or mere hewers of wood and drawers of water? It all depends on how seriously we take their early childhood development. Let's get started. Good evening and welcome to the Democracy Gauge. I'm Bongani Bingwa. This show is designed for the voice of the South African citizen to be elevated ahead of this year's elections. Now, our children may not be casting any votes in this election, but their well-being is as important as yours and mine. Almost half the country's children live in three provinces, KwaZulu Natal, the Eastern Cape and Limpopo. What do those provinces have in common? High levels of poverty and unemployment in predominantly rural areas with backlogs in infrastructure uh, development and service delivery. The key to a new narrative about these areas will be education. During this year's State of the Nation address, the President announced that early childhood development would be moved from social development to the Department of Basic Education and further making ECD compulsory for all children for the ages two, before, for the two years rather, before they enter grade one. And so that brings us to our poll question tonight. Do you think enough has been done to promote quality early childhood development? You can choose from the usual three colors. Green is for yes, yellow maybe, and red is for no. You can go to our poll topic on sabcnews.com and you can answer the question on Facebook and Twitter. Remember to use the hashtag SABCDG25 and hashtag SABC News. But what is early childhood development? It refers to the physical, emotional, social and cognitive development of a child. And let's not forget who this is for. Here's a reminder. I want to play with friends, draw and meet new friends. What I love about schools is that I get to draw and play. When I grow up, I want to be a man. My name is Lingons. My surname is Kula. I am a girl. I am five years old now. My school is in Martin Prayer School and uh, number 21 Callaway Spirit and Tata. My teacher name is Teacher Chara. My principal name is Mrs. Philip. When I grow up, I want to be a, doctor, want to be a teacher. By investing in early learning and quality early childhood development more broadly, uh, the research shows that that is probably the most effective investment. In fact, uh, Nobel Prize winning economists like John Heckman have shown that it is um, the greatest investment that any country can make if it invests in children between the ages of zero and five, as it has the highest rate of return. So are we paying enough attention to early childhood development? We're joined now by Dr. Logan Govender, who is the Education Programme Manager at Save the Children South Africa. He's in our Pretoria studios. Uh, Dr. Govender, a good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. At the beginning of our show, I made the bold statement that unless there are interventions by the age of six, if there's no early childhood development, in a sense, that child's fate has been sealed. Well, yes, I think I tend to agree with that to a large extent. Uh, you know, without a good solid foundation in the early years, from birth to six, um, children's chances of succeeding you know, in later years uh, at school, in the world of work, uh, highly constrained and limited. There are many people of my generation, certainly, who may argue that uh, the first time so many of us saw the doors of learning was when we were beginning school formally in grade one or thereabouts. What's suddenly the big deal? Well, the big deal is that uh, there, there is now enough evidence and research to support the view that uh, children who get a good education before they get to primary school, before they get to grade, uh, grade one, 
and here we're talking about you know a holistic integrated uh, development of the child not just their cognitive development but their emotional social and especially in these early years their physical development you know issues relating to health and nutrition extremely important that children are well nourished and they have come from nurturing environments to provide you know this uh, very essential platform uh, for them to succeed later on in life. So for many parents around the country there are so many other pressing issues in terms of providing shelter, providing food, often jobs are scarce. Is this yet another burden, another pressure on struggling families to have to deal with? It's certainly a huge pressure, especially for poor families and poor communities. And, you know, we have many of those in South Africa. We have, you know, a dual economy, very rich communities, rich families who can afford to send their children to preschools and get this additional support right at the beginning. So it is indeed a big struggle for, you know, the poorest of the poor, and this is where uh, the state and, uh, you know, other stakeholders like the corporate sector, the civil society, like organizations like ourselves, Save the Children, you know, it's important for them to forge a partnership to support, especially the poor. I mean, government has made certain commitments, we heard from the president during the State of the Nation address, uh, that uh, all children uh, must now be enrolled at these centers. Are there enough of them and is there enough information for parents to be able to access them? Well, there, there aren't enough centers. That's one of the big challenges for uh, preschool uh, children. Again, you know, the most uh, uh, deprived and marginalized of our children are the ones that suffer because they come from poor communities where you don't have these centers. Uh, I mean, uh, the latest statistics from Stats SA 2016 survey, you know, suggests that uh, more than 50% uh, of ECD centers uh, are really needed uh, to close the gap, especially, and we're talking here about children in the age group from three to six. For children from birth to three, the situation is more dire because most of uh, children from poor families, uh, you know, are at home and they get very limited support at home. Yeah. Uh, very often, uh, you know, their uh, parents are away working and they are taken care by gogos and grannies and they may not get the kind of support that they really need to develop uh, uh, you know, uh, as all-rounded uh, individuals. So, Dr. Govender, you're saying that we don't have enough of these facilities. Uh, one might also ask questions about whether those that we do have are adequate, generally speaking. What happens if families don't get this right, if parents uh, and caregivers don't get this right? How critical is it? Or can one make up for whatever gaps later in life? Well, it's, uh, if we don't get it right, uh, children will be disadvantaged. Uh, this is why uh, we are all involved uh, you know, in partnership with the government to support caregivers, to support ECD practitioners, to improve their skills and provide the best quality of ECD services as we can get. But if they don't get that, and if the quality is questionable, which in many instances it is, then it, you know, the challenge for children when they get to school and for educators and the system is, uh, is all that uh, greater. And, well, and this is why, you know, uh, uh, there is so much of pressure on teachers to avoid going on strikes so that they are in the classroom you know, all the time, so that children get, you know, the best uh, exposure uh, for as much of the time as possible. 
Dr. Cavendo, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. I mean, it just underpins how critical this issue is. With the focus on higher education, we have to ask the question, are our little ones getting left behind? And that's why we have tonight's poll question. Do you think enough has been done to promote quality early childhood development? You've got your three colors to choose from. Green is yes, yellow maybe, and red is no. You can go to our poll on sabcnews.com. You can answer the question on Facebook and Twitter. Remember, of course, to use the hashtags SABCDG25 and SABC News. We'll share your views after the break. Everyone wants a dignified funeral. That is what a clientele funeral plan can give you. Lasting dignity. I just want my family to be there, all relaxed, not worrying about paying for anything, knowing that clientele covered everything. I would like a dignified funeral and the rest should be invested for my children's future. Clientele funeral plans pay out in 24 hours. We will even send 200 rand airtime. You can cover up to 13 people on one plan. Plans include grocery, unveiling, and transport benefit. Plus, you can get all your premiums back. I told my family, I don't want a fancy funeral. They must come there for a cook sister and a sandwich, and then they must use the rest of the money for their future. I will never stop paying my monthly premium. To me, paying my monthly premium is as important as buying groceries. SMS LIFE to 31043, and we'll call you back. The Kalahari Transportier Park is a large wildlife preserve and conservation area in southern Africa. Kalahari means place of thirst. The total area is 38,000 square kilometers. Approximately three quarters of the park lie in Botswana and one quarter in South Africa. South Africa embraced the concept of transportiers linking ecological reserves across national borders. On the 12th of May 2000, President Festus Mukhaye of Botswana and Thabo Mbeki of South Africa formally launched South Africa's first peace park. It has 200 species of birds, including vultures, mammalians such as black Kalahari lions and large heads of herbivores, namely earlands, springboks, blue wildebeest, and more. Don't be afraid to open yourself up to new experiences. Exchange and share ideas and crafts. I want to move on from the idea of the African as an exotic person who dances nicely and makes good artwork. We must be at the cutting edge of everything possible as we once were. Many ancient African kingdoms had scientific and mathematical knowledge that still baffles experts today. When I look at Africa, I see hope, I see trust, bright colors, warm smiles, variety and difference. In the end, it's not just about wanting to know what the African look is or if we have a common African identity. Welcome back. As you know, it's all about you here on the Democracy Gauge. So let's get straight to what you have to say. Let's look at what people are saying on Facebook, for example. So Nobili says uh, no because the program has been misplaced. Social development deals with abuse and emotional problems, yet they put in early childhood development with them. And I think that's exactly why the announcement we heard in this year's State of the Nation address that ECD would be moved from social development to the Department of Basic Education. All right, what are people saying on Twitter? Muruti says, this might happen the day the children of government representatives share the same facilities as everyone else. For now, homeschooling is the way. All right, a bit of a radical option there. Uh, Lekhasa says, uh, 
development of early childhood is very poor because some of uh, the creche teachers aren't qualified. They themselves might be illiterate. And that's really part of the debate. Do we have enough of these facilities and those that we have, how adequate are they? We're going to continue with more of your thoughts. Right, we continue then with the voice of the people in tonight's edition of The People's View. We're featuring teachers, parents and concerned citizens. Have a look. My area, that is the Ponderland. Whether you talk about the east or west of the Ponderland, this childhood development, uh, uh, this childhood care development is not doing, uh, uh, is not happening for now. We take it as a, as a pronouncement on our area because really it is needed here. Yeah. But whenever government he, he wants to implement this side, they must make sure that they work together with the structures of government and also traditional leaders utilizing those sub headmans because our people they still believe in those headmans, sub headmans that is the traditional leaders because they are staying with them so right now it is very bad because some of uh, uh, those kids are, are staying uh, alone other one is feeding another one like they are living like parents what is they are still young um, i feel that the government can subsidize some preschools or preschools, so a lot of people that cannot afford the actual preschools for the kids, because there's millions of people that can't afford when they've got children. And also, um, kids could go there and get fed properly, and also for development and socialising, and just to develop their brain and all that. Also, they need exposure. They need exposure to that environment. Partially of it that the government has done it, but I don't think it is a, it is enough because these practitioners, some of them are absorbed, some of them are not yet absorbed. And we as educators, our wish is that these practitioners must get to the system. Right, if you want to be part of the people's view in our next show, send us an email to dg25 at sabc.co.za. At the end of this show, I'll, forward, I'll throw forward to tomorrow's topic. Now, if you are Faldila from Anderley Street, uh, the flower market there, recognize yourself. Your story is up next. Did you know the big hole digging started in 1871 and ended on the 14th August 1914. The hole produced 2,722 kgs of diamonds. However, one diamond as huge as 490 carat of stone found in the open prior 1868 gave them the interest to dig. Extracted from 22.5 million tons of soil. Today, the hole sits at a breathtaking 214 meters deep. Kimberley Big Hole attracts tourists from all over the world, taking a vintage tram past the city, then cycling around the Big Hole. When it comes to what's hot and fresh, we've got our finger on the pulse. Get your hearts racing, your hands clapping, and your feet tapping because Elive Amp in a vibe. Boy, the punk to Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. Get on the floor, baby, shake up your bum. Check out it, check out it, check out the song. Hold up, hold up.
So come and dance and bosh all yourself to live amp Fridays at half past seven only on SABC One Zanti for sure. Come and come and dance. Welcome back. I keep saying that through the Democracy Gauge, SABC News has been profiling South Africans from across the country. But is everything always roses? Well, today we're heading to the mother city. Why do I bring roses? Well, we're going to go to the flower market on Adderley Street in Cape Town. And uh, tonight uh, we are profiling Faldila Hamaldeen, who works in that flower market and has done so for a very long time in Adderley Street. This is her story. Hello, Hi, I am Valdila Hamildin. I live in Grossi Park and I'm born here in Adley Street and I'm still in Adley Street. How long have you been working here? Since the age of 15 and I'm 50, proud 55. Oh, that time there was no support. I had my mom had to work alone for nine children. It wasn't easy. So I have to leave school. I wanted to become and to learn for a judge just to punish the druggies, not the killers, the druggies. To be a South African to them a shame. It was far better before. But the new government, holy caramoli, I always vote. Why? Because I won. Who says you know? The ANC, uh, what the ANC, the DA at least to come back. And the Muslim, I don't know, vote ANC. Because the reason I vote, that my vote don't go for the ANC. And that's so wrong. If a person don't vote, then the vote goes to them. No, it's wrong. My dreams for my children is to learn and to go overseas. Really, no future for them here. I'm sorry to say. They must go look there by Dubai, Australia, Exuka, uh, uh, foreigner Sumafala. Really, I will give my daughters to a foreigner, take them over. Red is very bad. You know why? Because since the new government took over, everything goes bad. And Suma very bad. My name is Faldila Hamildin. I'm a citizen of the flower market, not from South Africa. And thank you. Yeah. All right, we wrap up our show then reflecting on how far we've come with the help of those SABC archives. Do you remember where you were on this day 25 years ago? What were your circumstances? Well, on this day in 1994, the SABC broadcast an exclusive interview with uh, Chief Mangosutu Muchelezi on the elections and the participation of the IFP. And it's particularly timely after this weekend's manifesto launch by that party. Dr. Butelezi, can we just try to get some clarity on the whole issue of your participation in the political process? You have already said that you are not going to take part in the election, and I take it that's final, final. Is it? Well, it is final, because the condition has been that unless the constitution is amended in terms of the yellow paper, which we actually uh, gave to the ANC and the government, on the 9th of December, then we're not participating. But at present, of course, on the 1st of March, we met with the president of the ANC, Dr. Mandela, and in that meeting, we decided that uh, to agree that we should re uh, register provisionally, which we did. And at the same time, uh, they agreed that we should have international mediation. And that international mediation has just been set up now. People have been identified, will be international mediators, and also the terms of reference have been agreed upon between the committee which represented the ANC and the IFP. So I really don't know how soon that will be. I mean, if the state, if the state president and Mr. Mandela 
wanted us to participate in the election, you really wanted us to participate in the elections. It's really not an impossibility to make it possible by seeing to it that this international mediation course takes place as soon as possible. It's not, it's not impossible. Yeah, but it's, it's not possible for a solution to be found before the election date. No, how, how is, is it? I mean, the, the date of the, of the election is not court ordained. I mean, in terms of the law, I mean, the, the state president and Mr. Mandela, if they agree, they could do that if, if they really wanted us to participate in the election. So what, what you are saying is that actually you would like to see the date postponed? In fact, I have said so publicly more than once. Even yesterday when I talked to the state president, I actually said that in passing. And at the press conference, one of the journalists asked, and I said that whether we had discussed that, the possible postponement, and I said that I had mentioned this in passing. Let's take a look now at the answers from today's poll. There it is on your screen. Do you think enough has been done to promote quality early childhood development? Uh, well, those are the figures. Only, what, 12% say yes, 13 say maybe, and a resounding 75% of you have said absolutely not. Uh, yep, it's not a, a pretty picture, I'm afraid, but these are the conversations we need to have as a country if we're to map a way forward. We thank you, as always, for watching and participating in our show. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about crime in South Africa, and in particular, the efficiency of the police in responding to crime incidents. And so there it is, our poll question. Do the police respond effectively to crime? Our poll is now open. You can choose from the three colors, as you know. Green is yes, yellow maybe, red is for no. You interact with our poll on sabcnews.com. By the way, sabcnews.com forward slash election is where you can find information about the SABC's election coverage. Our, Facebooks, our Facebook and Twitter, of course, are the platforms to engage with our question. Use the hashtag SABCDG25 and SABC News. You can also check out all the profiles featured on today's show as well as the past few days. Uh, you can do that at sabcnews.com. All right, that's where we're going to leave it, uh, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same place. From me, Bongani Bingwa, thank you for watching. Good night.